All right, folks, we're back with a part two. It seems like I cannot tap over without stopping the video in terms of using this on my phone. Um, it's just that because it's Tuesday, I have Ludo Sport today and I ha then have D&D tomorrow. I have D&D on Thursday and then again on Friday night and then Saturday and Saturday night. <laughs> so I have like it's it's the moment where I just have so much stuff going on that I'm trying to take the small moments to get like you know it, uh, in this case a two part video done. Uh, so also coming in uh, there's another thing that's from Eberron that we're getting a bit more of an expansion on and that's going to be potentially utilized in normal D and D. We've it was mentioned. It's the idea of magical tattoos. Now, we already saw the idea of magical tattoos introduced in in, the, in a broader sense, other than Eberron, in the sense of Critical Role. I don't I don't believe there is any mention of them though, in Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. So it's going to be interesting seeing that in um, Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything. There, we're also going to be getting new items, uh, sorry, new magic items and artifacts. There's also going to be more. Uh, tool tips uh, for making puzzles and such which we saw in terms of Teros and also in uh, Xanatar's Guide to Everything. Now mind you Xanatar's Guide to Everything was more on trap so it seems that Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything is shaping up to be similar to Xanatar's Guide to Everything. In the sense that it's not just for players, it's for DMs as well. It's going to have something for everyone. Similar to how you would sometimes get like um, this other source books. Not modules, source books. Such as Ravnica and Mystic, uh, uh, Mystic Odysseys of Teros. They both add something for players. and But there's also stuff for DMs. As opposed to modules. Now modules on occasion have something for players. Uh, but they're normally located in the back of the book, like uh, new backgrounds. Uh, Tomb of Annihilation added two new backgrounds, the Anthropologist and the Archaeologist. And uh, the Haunted one was added in uh, Return to Rav uh, Ravenloft. And I believe that they were the only ones that added a new background. Uh, not so sure. I believe uh, Out of the Abyss added... A new uh, sub race for gnomes, the deep gnomes. But other than that, I believe that's it. So it's mainly with these source books that we get our biggest content. Now, some uh, some new source books play more towards DMs and or players. Uh, for example, Ravnica, uh, Mr. Goddesses of Teros, pardon me, and um, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. They cater more towards the DM than they do players. Now, they do have something for players, but they gear more towards the DM. Whereas Xanatar's, uh, you could argue, leans more towards players. I think Xanatar's Guide was is one of the few source books that is a good mix between the two. Mordenkainen's added stuff for players, but again, leads more to DMs. Uh, so we're gonna we're probably gonna see something like that. Like it's gonna be more like Xanatars. I feel like I feel it's gonna be an equal measure, player DM type of uh, thing. So I'm personally looking forward to it. one of my as people know my fav one of my favorite um, sorry my all time favorite classes have been spellcasters. Now when I say cl my favorite classes, I of course mean uh, the official content. There are. A few uh, homebrew classes that I'm very fond of that I actually helped um, develop like. Uh, one is a gunslinger, the other is a dragon knight, and then the other is um, uh, a necromancer. Um, several of which have some level of spellcasting. Uh, but I'll get into them uh, in a different video. I don't want to talk about them in this video. Um... I would be a bit missed if I didn't see if I if I didn't see more Tasha's whatever labeled on certain spells or like in terms of artifacts and magic items. What I would what my since we're we're going to be reaching the end of this video, folks, 
So here's what I'm hoping. I'm, I plan to pre-order the book on Amazon. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available on D, uh, D&D Be- uh, Beyond. I don't know why it's not available on D&D Beyond because uh, it's official Wizards content and generally they... Because Wizards of the Coast has been so supportive of D&D Beyond and, they, and they're really trying to support it and try and, you know, make it an official, you know, tool, uh, pl- sorry, tool for players and DMs, I don't see why they're not releasing this on it. And I honestly don't know why. They encourage, like, it's just weird. And a lot of the d uh, Facebook posts, uh, a lot of the time they go back to, you know, encouraging you to buy something on d Beyond. So I don't understand why this is the uh, case. Um, like, they, they encourage it to such a point that, like, buying something on d Beyond gets you early access. So I, I honestly don't know what was the coast and what's going on there um but yeah i have a wish list if i had a wish list for tasha's uh hideous sorry tasha's cauldron of everything um my wish list would be revised ranger number one top of the list and i would want it at some point to be integrated into the and beyond because i i have a, i have a few players uh that i have a few players in my campaigns and i have well, and I know people who use D and D Beyond, uh, just in general, who want to play the Ranger, but they want to play the Beast Conclave Ranger, and they don't want to play Gloomstalker. Which, unfortunately, with the, the current way Ranger is, the Gloomstalker is the only viable option. Um, so I'm really hoping they integrate into D and D Beyond. So yeah, Revised Ranger. Um. I would love to see some really cool uh, new sentient objects. I would love to see some new necromancy spells. Uh, now, Xanatar's Guide was great for necromancy spells. It was really amazing. It makes playing a necromancer so much more viable, especially in terms of sudden combat. Normally, the necromancer is such a long-term play style. You can't you uh for example you can't you know you go into combat all of a sudden you you have no you have no one dead to command or anything like that but with that da- uh t- dance macabre um or macabre you have you can animate up to seven corpses so there you go um so i would love to see new necromancy spells especially considering from what i'm gathering tasha is i doubt it uh, but like necromancy is often attributed to the, the dark magics and such and Tasha is often described as being the stereotypical witch hence why the name of this book is um, Ca- Tasha's Cauldron of Everything so we might see some new necromancy spells and I'm, I'm personally looking forward to that I'm also looking forward to I know a few people who would love to play into the witch motif and so I'm excited about that hell even the cover of of the book has her wearing a very traditional witch's hat over a cauldron so i would love to see that i want i would love to see new potions uh in terms of expanded uh let's see what else would i love to have on the wish list um uh, uh, i would like if they like everyone was gray uh for the group background stuff and all that I would like to see more of that and I'm really hoping we get it and I would love also if like as part of the session zero uh tool tip section like it has like this really cool thing where you and your players can create like your starting location or hub because like I saw that on Nerdarchy and it's a really fun idea like I've taken part in it uh, twice and it's really amazing to be part of that as a boat player and as a DM. But um, that's it, folks. Uh, that's my wishes for Tasha's Hideous Laugh. Uh, sorry, Hideous, uh, sorry, not Hideous, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And I really hope um, it does get integrated onto the Indie Beyond. Uh, you know what? A bonus. I know it wasn't mentioned, and they did, and they were, and I, I, I imagine that. The choice of expand the use of the word expanded is very careful there. 
But I personally would love to see maybe one new subclass. Uh, not for the wizard. The wizard has plenty now, thanks to Wild Mount and Xanatar's Guide. Uh, if I, I wouldn't mind seeing a new sorcerer type. We have the Shadow, the Celestial. Yeah, that was it. We only have the Sorcerer and Celestial uh, as of late. Oh, uh, there's uh, Phoenix. Yeah, and Storm. Actually, okay, so I would like to see a new Druid. Uh, I'm in talks with some uh, fellow DMs of mine that, that we're looking to expand. Like, sorry, we're hoping to make a new type of Druid that specializes in poisons. And maybe venomous, um, what's it called? Uh, wall shaping creatures. Uh, there's some debates going on in terms of that, in terms of how to utilize the wall shaping and how to approach that. Um, but I would mind seeing, like, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, some you know, new stuff for uh, the druids, you know? Um, let's see, yeah, that's about it. Uh, that in terms of a new subclass, that's what I would like to see. Uh, I already have my favorite druid technically, which is the Circle of Spores. Even though people do say the the sp the the spore uh, ability that they get is very weak, because it's be apparently they they call it it's basically this power of a cantrip, uh, with the exception that you know you you can only pop it uh, twice. At most per short rest. Well, other than that, folks, this is it. This is Wolf Ninja signing out. May the force be with you. And remember, roll for initiative.